Toyota Sequoia is all new for this model year. Changes include updated styling, a new hybrid engine, and upgraded infotainment. I drove and reviewed this vehicle back in November, had a good experience with it. Then I came across a review by a respected journalist who said it was one of the most disappointing vehicles he drove in 2022. And it's nothing personal, but I completely disagree. Here's what he wrote, quote, We waited nearly 15 years for a new Sequoia. Maybe we should have waited a bit longer. Rarely have I spent time with a new vehicle and thought, that's just not competitive. In the face of the Chevy Tahoe, GMC Yukon, Ford Expedition, and Jeep Wagoneer, it's very hard to identify ways in which the Sequoia has any advantage, let alone isn't in dead last. Even as fuel economy, courtesy of a standard hybrid powertrain, was woefully disappointing. I barely cracked 16 miles per gallon versus an EPA estimate of 22 miles per gallon combined. The biggest strike against the Sequoia is its switch from an independent rear suspension to a solid rear axle. The very opposite of what GM did with its most recent generation of full-size SUVs to provide superior ride, handling, and interior packaging. Specifically, a low enough rear floor to allow for a fold-flat third-row seat with sufficient legroom. Yet that solid rear axle also results in something that also plagued GM's last generation of full-size SUVs. Constant shimmying and vibrations when outfitted with gigantic wheels. The Sequoia Capstone I tested had 22-inch dubs, which in concert with the wagon, cart, suspension, and body-on-frame construction made even the seemingly smoothest of roads feel like they were made of gravel. Vibrations are constant and impacts are tiresome. There was absolutely nothing luxurious about it despite the lofty $80,000 price tag. Shocking gets thrown around a lot, but it truly applies here. The Sequoia Capstone was shockingly disappointing. End quote. Here was my official take on the 2023 Sequoia Capstone. I'm going to show you some of the highlights inside. I'm going to spare you a lot of the details and numbers that I've talked about beforehand, but look at this. Front-facing car seat here. This has the captain's chairs in the middle, but you can get the, the bench seat. Sorry for the shadows there, but got that seat folded down. Got room for the little one back there. It's three people can sit in the back. Look at this nice, big panoramic sunroof. That is super, super awesome. Makes it so much more airy inside. A lot of positives. I, I do believe the positives outweigh the negatives of this Sequoia. Um, let's see if it's going to open. No, okay. Got this, which opens this, so you can get your holiday items back here, no problem. Or you can hit this button here, and now it'll open up. So it depends on what you're doing with uh, parking. That glass on top helps if you're in a tight parking spot at the grocery store, Home Depot, and so on. These seats have a nice little feature here. So you can pull the seat back, look at that. So if that person is leaning back too far and you can't fold this down, you bring it back this way or push it back that way to give you some more cargo right here. This also has a tray, but I have this stuff on top of it. There's a tray right here, which can be stackable. So you can have different levels of storage, depends on how tall the low items are and how high you want your items to be. So these little trays here, nice little shelving system, and these will help you uh, raise and lower the seats. Now, because that seat is in the way, and that's why that comes in handy. There we go. So it comes up. Same thing can happen with this side with the other button, but we've got a 60-40 split here with the back seat. You can see how much extra room a person can get if they want to slide back or slide forward. So I do like that quite a bit. This is a, this is a big selling point for me, is that versatility and also the stacking of the cargo in the back. Close it up. Got the running boards that pop out. That's nice. You kind of have to to get yourself in. But there's another angle of the back seat. This is, you know, this is gonna be a great family vehicle for a lot of people. Just not for me because of the fuel economy. If I'm getting something this big at 80 grand, I'm not gonna do it now. It's, uh, I'm gonna want a better fuel economy. But look at that view. That is an awesome view. Speaking of which, oh yeah, this is the capstone, so we got all the cool stuff with this one. Uh, but it's temporary. There we go with this side. Isn't that beautiful interior? Just a gorgeous interior. They really did a good job with the Toyota and they got that huge screen right there, which would probably be better looked at from the other side. Big massive wheels, I think these are 22s. 
I may have said 20 in my previous video. I believe those are 22s. The engine's nice. I gotta give it to you. The engine is nice. I know it's a hybrid V6 twin turbo, but it's good. And here's some other things that really make this thing stand out and make it, I guess, family friendly. You got two high, two uh, four high, four low. Drive modes. Make sure I get this in the right spot. Different drive modes. You can see there, sport, normal, and eco. As I turn those things around, just changes what you want to do around around town. Nice little visual display as well. There's some more good details here for you know a light that you can turn on turn on uh, just below the lift gate. Here's your gas, so on. Here's the steering wheel again, top trim level. Steering wheel mounted controls. Looking sharp here, volume, Bluetooth, uh, cruise control, lane keeping, aid or departure alert, adaptive cruise control there, setting it and so on. So all that stuff is great, no problem there. Controls just above, all the different fun toggles and views. Hit this view right there, check out the 360. Check out the 360. Checking out all the snow around us right now. So this is going to be a good vehicle for people who want to go on their weekend adventures, weekend warriors, and for these challenging weather conditions like this. So now that we've done the full 360, if I put it in reverse, the glare is a little bit of an issue, but you get your 360 on this side, you get your backup right there, and you can change angles of what you want to see. So as that one right there shows them front mirrors, there's cameras in front of the, uh, the front side mirrors. Those mirrors there, those mirrors there. That's looking out that way. And then if you wanna look backwards. So again, they're, they're thinking and making sure that you're, you're as safe as possible. And check this out, you see this, a USB port up here. Heated and ventilated seats, a wireless charging pad right here. I mean, these are all the cool features, but these are things that stood out to us this week on what make it a, a good family vehicle plenty of cargo. Now this cargo here slides in or that way, but you can also just open it up. Got some tissues down here, some more USB ports. One's the USB normal, another one's the C, spot for change and so on. Uh, but good spacing from this passenger, the driver, to the passenger over here. And then when you look back, you can see everybody just fine. Love that panoramic sunroof, moonroof. And plenty of cup holders for all your hydration needs and so on so there you go that's how uh, uh here's some of the highlights that we like this year with this 2023 one final note if you are in the market for a new vehicle soon great connect with your local dealership and price and test drive at least three different vehicles a vehicle's strengths and weaknesses can only be discovered when you are behind the wheel. My reviews can be good, but you need to test drive these yourself. Visit quotes.everymandriver.com, select the make model in your zip code, and you'll get invoice pricing in your area on those vehicles. Shop smarter with price quotes at quotes.everymandriver.com. Thanks for watching. Please cl click subscribe and give us a thumbs up. See you next time.